All right, Owls, this is Mr. O with your next set of flip notes for the wave unit. This one's going to be based on sound. And your TOC, which we'll do in class, is going to be page number 11. It's going to be sound flip notes, but we'll take care of that in class. Now, sound is one of those things that is a topic that has lots of parts to it. Um, we're going to review different sections. As you look at the sheet that I gave you to flip out as you go, the headings are really important to keep in mind. So first, let's just define sound. Sound is a wave produced by vibrations in a medium. We talked about that in our wave mini labs. And just if you did not realize it, it travels through matter in all directions, meaning when you make a sound, even though it's traveling as a longitudinal wave, it's sending out tons of longitudinal waves in all directions. Now, sound waves, let's just classify what they are. They are a mechanical wave that travels longitudinal wave movement. So in your sheet, it's mechanical, which means it needs a medium. Without a medium, you cannot make sound. And the wave movement is a longitudinal or compressional, however you choose to write that. How sound waves are produced, or how produced means how they're made. It's a vibrating object that pushes and pulls on the medium and sends waves in all directions. The key here is vibrations. So sound waves are produced by vibrations. Any sound you hear from your voice to a tree falling to a siren to an alarm are all vibrations of some sort in a medium. That medium can be solid, liquid, gas of any sort. How particles move as energy is transferred through a sound wave. They move in the direction of the disturbance. This is basically the definition of a longitudinal wave movement. Um, because the energy and the direction are going together, unlike in a transverse wave movement where they move perpendicular. And these particles are compressed together, then spread out over again in a cycle until the medium takes over the energy of the wave. How your vocal cords work. Those are the things that make your voice you. How do they work? There's three things. Air is pushed up from the lungs. You force this air and that causes the vocal cords to vibrate and the vibrating vocal cords produce sound waves. And this is how your voice changes because your vocal cords will change as you get older. There are sections and parts of the ear. Uh, the ear is one of the two parts of the body that we'll learn about in this unit of waves, the ear and the eye when we get to light. There, the ear has three sections and then each section has three parts to it. Um, not three parts, but it has parts to it. The first section is the outer ear. It's called the outer ear because it's on the outside of your body. And that parts they have are the ear, the ear canal, and the ear drum. I always remember because the outer ear all start with the word ear. The middle ear is made up of three bones, and these bones are the smallest bones in your body. And they are known as the hammer, anvil, and stirrup. Hammer is the one that would be the furthest out, and then the stirrup would be the one closest to your inside of your head. I always remember the middle ear has, H-A-S, because hammer, anvil, stirrup, has three bones. And then the inner ear, the parts of that would be the cochlea and the auditory nerve. With the ear and the eye, they both will end with a nerve because they're sending messages to the brain. How we hear sound. Well, sound waves cause the eardrums to vibrate. Well, even before that, your ear will catch sound waves, and then it causes your eardrums to vibrate. These vibrations will travel through the three bones, and the three bones will make the sound waves go from your outer ear to your inner ear. And then the vibrations travel through the cochlea, which there's these little hairs in there, and these hairs interpret what's being said, and they will send messages to the brain via the auditory nerve, telling your brain what that sound is. Um, as you get older, you d your body learns different sounds. So if you hear a sound for the first time, your body doesn't understand what that is because your, your brain has not interpreted that sound before. However, as you get older and you've heard that sound before, you're like, oh yeah, that's a firework. Or, oh yeah, that's a car alarm. Or, oh yeah, that's the refrigerator in the kitchen making that noise. So we develop sound messages as you get older because your brain will learn different sounds. There's different effects that materials have on sound. Uh, we talked about this a little bit when we did the wave tree diagram, but the denser the material, the faster it travels. And so that would make a solid the fastest and the gas the slowest. Um, remember that speed does not mean how clear the sound is or how well you hear the sound. It's just talking about how fast that sound wave is being pushed through that medium. Um, the reason for that is sounds mechanical, meaning it needs a medium. 
which means it has to hit atoms, and the closer those atoms are together, the faster it will move. The next is the effect of temperature on sound. The higher the temperature, the faster it travels, because if you increase the temperatures, like we learned in the matter unit, atoms move faster, allowing sound to hit the atoms quicker. If those atoms are slower, it has a lower chance of hitting those atoms. Now, don't get me wrong, temperature does affect sound, but it's not a drastic change in the speed of the sound. It's just it does have an effect on it. And the last two things, pitch and frequency. Um, pitch is how high or low a sound wave is. I often refer to a kindergartner with a high-pitched voice and a, an adult with a low-pitched voice. But that's based on frequency. So the higher the frequency, the higher the pitch, which is a direct relationship. The lower the frequency is the lower the pitch. And this is the part that I think is confusing with sound, is that even though sound travels as a longitudinal wave, if you measure frequencies of sound waves, they are measure, measured as a transverse wave movement, which means that longitudinal wave must be put into a machine, and that machine will produce a transverse wave movement showing the frequency of the sound wave. We'll talk about that more in class. And the last thing is intensity equals amplitude. Intensity is the amount of energy a sound wave has. Amplitude is the amount of energy a wave has, so that makes sense that these two would equal each other. Intense sound can cause hearing damage. And uh, when you talk about hearing issues, most hearing loss issues are found with problems in the cochlea, meaning those hairs are not standing up properly. Um, often you'll hear kids that have cochlear implants, meaning they have an implant behind their ear that charges those hairs in the cochlea to stand up to hear sounds better. It's not the only way hearing loss issues are found, but it is a very common way hearing issues are found. As always with flip notes, write down any questions you may have, and we will talk about these when these notes are due. Thank you.